Thank you for the introduction. So, hi. Uh, as Maxim said, uh, I will speak about a post quantum signature from multiparty computation. More precisely, I'm going to speak about the MPC in Z framework, which will, which we will have uh, probably an important place in the, this new call of the NIST, as said by Maxim. So, here is the agenda of the presentation. First, I'm going to make a short introduction to present the context we are working on. Then I will present the NPC and Z8 framework, the general principle. After that, I will present how we use this framework to build post-quantum signature. Then we will, I will present several optimization and variants we enable us to achieve practical performances and we, uh, is used in most of the um, signature schemes submitted in the new call. And finally, I will speak about briefly two related works and conclude. Introduction. So to build signature schemes, we have mainly two approach. The first one is the hash and sign paradigm. The idea is to sign a message, we will first hash it, and then the, um, the signer will use a, a one way you will use a trapdoor of a one way function to compute a pre image of uh, of the hash digest and then anyone who can uh, verify the signature the signature by applying the one way function in the other sense it, it doesn't know to it doesn't require to know the trapdoor and that's it. Um, this paradigm uh, has the advantage to produce short signatures, but uh, he, he, uh, since there is a trapdoor in the public key in the one-way function, it's more sensitive to structural attacks. And since there is a trapdoor to weigh in the public key, the public key is often large. We can take the example of UOV, where the public key is tens of kilobytes. In the other side, we have uh, the, um, the signature schemes built from uh, a zero knowledge proof or an identification scheme. The idea is we have a, a prover who want to convince a verifier that he, he knows the private key corresponding to the public key. And there will be an exchange, a dialogue between the prover and the verifier. And at the end, normally, the verifier will be convinced without knowing the private key. Of course, it must be remain secret. And thanks to the fiat Shamir transform, we can get a, a signature schemes. This approach lead to larger signatures, but have the advantage to have no trapdoor in, in the public key. And so we can have, a, it's lead to conservative schemes and the public key is very small, can be very small. In the, in the context of the NPC in the head, we are in the second approach, since in fact the NPC in the head framework is a technique to build zero knowledge proof. Just to define a bit more what is a proof of knowledge, the idea is the prover knows um, a pre image of some value y by the function, uh, by a one way function and he wants to convince the verifier. First, he will send an initial message called commitment. Then, the verifier will ask some question. We call those questions challenges. And the prover will answer, and at the end, normally, the verifier will say if it's convinced or not. Such a discussion, such a dialogue, satisfies the three properties. The completeness property, if the prover is honest, meaning that if he knows such a pre-image of uh, the value y, then at the end of this discussion, the um, verifier must be convinced. The soundness, if the prover is malicious, meaning that he does not know such a pre-image, then we want that the verifier is not convinced in, more precisely, it will be convinced only with a negligible probability. 
finally, uh, we want uh, to achieve the zero knowledge property, meaning that after the discussion, the verifier not, must learn nothing about the secret X itself, the, the pre-image X, even not uh, partial information. As I said, the MPCNZ framework is a technique to build such a zero knowledge proof. It had been introduced in the article of stocks in 2007, and it enabled us to turn a MPC protocol into a zero knowledge proof. And it has a nice property to be very generic. We can apply this transformation for any one way function. During a long time, almost one decade, there was no practical instance of this framework. It, it was considered as a theoretical result. But since around 2016-17, the framework become more and more popular, and now we, can hash, we have very interesting schemes. We can cite the first signature schemes based to the MPC in the framework, which is Picnic, which has been submitted as the first uh, call of the NIST in 2017. And in this new call of the NIST, there, is, there has been a lot of improvement of the technique, and there is now a lot of schemes like it based on the MPC in the framework. We can cite uh, there is uh, eight schemes among the 40 signatures, submissions. Aimer, Biscuit, Mira, Mirit, Mcom, Perk, Ride, SD, and Zed. That's it. This figure is a roadmap to build uh, signature schemes from the MPC and Zed framework. First, we, have, we need to choose a one-way function. Since it's very generic, we must make when we design such a signature, we need to choose one. It can be uh, from uh, one-way function from the AES, ciphertext, it can be a multivariate quadratic system, it can be anything we want. Then, we will build a MPC protocol, a multi-party computation, which will, where each entity, which parties of the multi-party computation will take a shares uh, of the sharing of uh, the pre-image. And the idea is that all the parties will jointly compute uh, a function G, which is accept if the given input is a, really a pre-image of the one-way function and reject otherwise. I will more, enter more in details just after. Once we have this uh, MPC protocol, we applied the MPC in the head framework to get a zero knowledge proof where a prover can convince a verifier that he knows such a pre-image. Finally, the last part is the easiest one. We applied the fiat Chamir transformation to remove the interaction during the exchange. And in practice, we just replace a verifier by a hash function. So let us focus on the main part, the MPC in Z transformation. First, we need to speak about uh, in which model we are working on for the multi-party computation. As I said, we have our pre-image X, and we will share it. So it means that we will decompose it in X1, X2, Xn, so that the sum of the shares are equal to the secret. Then we will give one share by party in the computation. And then there will be exchange, computation, each one will compute something. At the end, all the parties involved in the multi-party computation will say, accept if the shared value was a pre-image and will reject otherwise. We consider n minus one private protocol. What does it mean? It means that if someone, some adversary, see the computation of all the parties except the last one, then the secret must remain secret, must remain hidden. Finally, we assume that we are in the semi-honest model. It means that the MPC protocol just needs to be secure as soon as all the party doesn't honestly follow the protocol. In MPC, it's a weak notion, 
but in fact, we don't need more in, uh, in the NPC in the in the, in the paradigm. For efficiency, the first schemes were relying on this model, but for efficiency, the last schemes uh, are working on the broadcast model. It means that all the parties will not use peer-to-peer communication will not use peer-to-peer -peer communication, but instead will broadcast value to everyone. So they will send a value to the public domain and everyone can get all the value in the public domain. It means that, for example, all the parties take a sharing of uh, X and they make uh, some comp local computation to obtain a sharing of a value alpha, for example, and everyone will broadcast the share of alpha. Since we are working on additive sharing, everyone can make the sum of the broadcast, broadcasted value, and get the plain value alpha to continue the computation, make, make a deeper long, other computation. The idea is we will use the protocol I described with those property. We don't need more to know more in a black box manner to build our zero knowledge proof. How we will proceed? So we have our prover and our verifier. First, the prover, which knows the, the pre-image, the secret X, will generate an additive sharing of X. And he will commit, make a commitment of each chair independently. And we'll send the commitment digest to the verifier. Then it will run the MPC protocol in his head. It means it will emulate all the computation of all the parties locally in his head. It's why, in fact, the framework is called the MPC in the head because the prover run exactly the protocol, all the computation of all the parties in his head and emulate everything in his head. Then, all the broadcasted value in the the computation will be sent to the verifier. The question of the verifier will be, will, uh, the verifier will choose a random party, I star, and the idea is that after the, this question, this challenge, the verifier, the prover, will reveal the computation of all the party except the party I star. It means that, in, in practice, it means that the, uh, the prover will reveal all the input share of all the parties except the hidden one. And the verifier will check is, uh, are the input shares, the revealed input share consistent with the commitment previously done? And um, are the all the computations, the revealed computation, consistent between them. For example, if, some, if a party sends the message one, it means that the other one must get the value one, the same value. It must be, have no inconsistency between them. And if everything is inconsistent, it can accept the, it, it, it is, the verifier is convinced. So, what about the zero knowledge property? We directly have the zero knowledge property because the protocol we use, the MPC protocol we use, is n minus one private. By definition, it means that if someone sees the computation of all the parties except one, then he gets no information about the secret. And it's exactly this situation. The verifier learn nothing about, see only the computation of all the parties except one, so he learns nothing. What, why, the sound, why the proof is sound? Let's imagine that we have a malicious prover. We do not know such a pre-image. How we will proceed? First, as previously, we'll generate a sharing. But a sharing of what? Of a value x, which is not the pre-image of, uh, of y, because he's malicious, he doesn't know such a pre-image. So it will, x will will not satisfy the equation f of x is equal to y. It will send, it will commit the value, the input share, and then it will run the computation in his head. 
but if he runs the computation honestly, the output of the computation of the MPC protocol will be rejection. In the MPC protocol will not accept, uh, will, yes, will output reject because the X, the shared value, is not a pre-image of the, of the one-way function. So it means that to have, uh, to, in order to have the MPC protocol which output accept, the proven need to cheat on the computation of at least one party. But in this case, the verifier will, as previously, choose a random party, and, and the malicious proven need to send all the computation of all the party except the hidden one. But if the cheating party, the corrupted party, is revealed, it means that uh, the verifier will detect the cheating because he will recompute everything of all the party, reveal party, and he will see the cheating. So he will reject, he, will, he sees that there is a problem. The only way that the prover can, a malicious prover can convince a verifier is when the verifier has to reveal the, all the party except the cheating one. And this probability, this, situ, this event occurs with probability one over the number of party, one over n in this case. To sum up the MPC in the transformation, we have our zero knowledge property because we use MPC protocol which is n minus one private. So, and since the verifier learn see only one minus one parties, he learned nothing about the secret. It is sound because the probability that a prover can convince a verifier is the probability that the corrupted party remains secret, uh, remain hidden which is one other n, one other the number of parties. But it is not a negligible probability. At the beginning of my presentation, I said that if the, the prover is malicious, we want that the verifier accept only with negligible probability. And it's not the case. So in practice, like often when we make zero knowledge proof with non-negligible soundness error, we will repeat in parallel to, and uh, the, if we repeat two times, the soundness error will be one of the n to two. And so we choose the parameter two to have what we want. So th that is for the transformation, the generic transformation. So I will explain how we built signature scheme from heat. That is the roadmap I showed previously. So I, I just explain this part. So if we start by the beginning, we need to choose a one-way function and to build a multi-party computation that we will be able to use in the following. In practice, which kind of one-way function can be used? There is three approaches. The first one consists to rely on standard uh, symmetric primitive, like AES. It's the case of BBQ, Banke, Limbosine, Helium. There is a lot of signature relying, for example, on AES. However, it leads to quite large signature. The best one is around uh, 10, 12 kilobytes of signature for the first security level. The other approach, the second approach, is to rely on MPC-friendly symmetric primitive. For example, it was the case of Picnic, which has, uh, which, for which the one-way function was based on LoMC, which has a block cipher which has been designed such that the number of multiplication in his circuit is uh, small. There is a there is also the RAIN block cipher. And recently, there is the AIM one-way function. The red value means that it has been submitted in the new call of the NIST. The other one has not been submitted. Finally, the last approach is, uh, yes, when we rely on MPC-friendly one-way function, we have 
short, shorter signature. It was uh, what we want. But the problem is we can have a concern about the security because we introduce a new, a new symmetric primitive. So we need a deep cryptanalysis to, be, uh, to have a mature security notion. The, the last one is to try to rely on well-known problems like the syndrome decoding problem or the mean rank problem. Uh, it has been studied be, while, during a long time. The syndrome decoding is very old. And, uh, and we can try to, yes, we, our one-way function can be uh, based on one of those well-known hard problems. And this has the advantage to er inheritage all the cryptanalysis we, of this part of, uh, of the problem. If we use uh, the syndrome decoding problem, we already have a lot of cryptanalysis about it. And this leads to more conservative uh, schemes. Now we chose one of the, um, on, when we chose one way, one way function, we need to build a MPC protocol. I will not enter in the details how we can build a MPC protocol which satisfy, which jointly compute. Uh, I will not explain how we build the MPC protocol will check that the shared input is a pre-image of what we want, because there is a lot of tricks, a lot of techniques. It's all different for all the submission, because it's, it won't be, it's not possible to describe everything in the slide. I will just explain a few, uh, few, few, few tricks, we say. In the two first case, it it's, uh, seems we are relying on symmetric primitive. It often can be expressed as an arithmetic circuit or a Boolean circuit. It has a natural expression as it. So we can directly use all the MPC in the based proof system which exist, like BN++. It's not the case for the last approach because, for example, if we try to build um, uh, the circuit corresponding to the checking of the syndrome decoding, it will be quite ugly and will give a very large signature size. So in fact, we need to rephrase the well-known hard problem to achieve uh, interesting performances. It's like a, a sort of a kind of arithmetization of the problem. Let's take just one example to just illustrate what I'm saying. In, like, in the case of the RAID signature schemes, RAID are relying on the syndrome decoding problem in the wrong metric. So there is a problematic of how we can check efficiently that a vector have a wrong weight smaller than some bound R. If we, uh, if we express as an arithmetic circuit directly, it will be not beautiful. But one arithme possible arithmetization is we simply show that all the coordinates of the secret are roots of a degree uh, Q to R, Q polynomial. And a Q polynomial is a polynomial for which the degree of each monome is a power of Q. I will not explain why it works, but it works. And it's this new formulation of the problem is very practical since uh, uh, the, the application to power Q is a Frobenius application, which is linear. And so we'll, when it's linear, it's very efficient the MPC protocol, and we, we can make very efficient protocol. So for all the submission, which are relying on this uh, well-known art problems, we need to have a step of arithmetization. Finally, what, once we have our zero knowledge uh, our multi-party computation, we get our zero knowledge proof thanks to the MPC in Z framework. And we use the fiat Chamier transformation to get our signature schemes. So as I said, we just replace the verifier, the message of the verifier, which is uh, uh, which party must remain secret, which is the challenge of the verifier. It will be the output of a hash function in which we put inside 
the input of the hash function will be the message we want to sign and all the data previously sent by the prover. Just a precision about, um, we can apply directly the fiat Shamir transformation, but we must be aware that if we are working on more than three rounds, for example, five rounds or seven rounds protocols, there is an attack, and so we just need to select our parameter, the number of repetition, two, we, we need to take it bigger to mitigate this attack. And in fact, what I described was a free round protocol, so norm normally there is no problem, but for efficiency, sometimes the MPC protocol required randomness for, from the verifier, so there is a new, uh, another challenge for the verifier. verifier. Almost all the submission is, uh, uh, is issue is uh, a farm round protocol, except if I remember correctly, MCOM, which is a seven round protocol, which has been transformed into signature schemes. That is for the roadmap. Now let's speak about uh, optimization and variants. In, in this um, in this section, I will present you a free main optimization. And uh, to illustrate them, to be to illustrate them, I will apply to uh, the syndrome decoding instance schemes uh, to be more practical to to see what it means, uh, what the impact on the performances of each optimization. Just so I will take uh, the instance of the syndrome decoding in, syndrome decoding Z, uh, which is. Uh, from category one of the NIST in the new call, and we are, which are working on the field 220L, 251 elements. It, it, it will be important in the following. Just, I will show some running time, some value, but it's not exactly the, uh, the performances of the signature schemes which has been submitted. I don't use the exact same code. I use, uh, my own uh, workspace, so it's just to have an idea, a global idea of the performances. So if we try to understand w uh, what, what is the signature size when we use the NPC NZ framework, first, in the first round, we need to send N commitment digest in the first arrow. In the second arrow, we need to send all the broadcasted value and in the last uh, arrow, we need to send the input share of all the parties except one. So it means that the signature size will be this one, and we need to repeat all this quantity two times, which is the number of times we repeat the zero knowledge proof. If we try to apply the, this formula to the syndrome decoding in the head schemes, the quantity involved in the um, is in scheme is, uh, is the following. The input of each party in the MPC protocol is around 300 bytes, and the broadcasted value by each uh, party is around uh, 50 uh, bytes. We would obtain this graphic. The, in the X axis, it's which change the number of parties involved in the MPC computation. And in the y axis, we have the signature size, the proof size. We see that if we are working on two parties, we are already in signature size of 50 kilobytes. And it's worse if we take a larger number of parties. So, for the moment, it's what I call the naive transformation. If we make a textbook transformation and we try to apply it, it doesn't give interesting performances. So can, how we can save communication? The, the first trick uh, consists to, uh, to do the following. Instead of sending all the commitment digest, we will send a hash of them. And in practice, the verifier will be able to recompute all the commitment it, itself, uh, is, except for the commitment of the hidden party. So the prover, will send the commitment of the hidden party at the end, but does not require to send all the commitment digests. You just need to send a hash digest of them. And the verifier will 
recompute the hd gest and check if it's consistent. We can apply the same uh, optimization to uh, the broadcasted value. We can send only a hash of them, and the verifier will be able to recompute them for all the o revealed parties. And so the verifier just need to send uh, the, the broadcasted value by the hidden party. Now the bottleneck in the communication case, uh, in the communication size, uh, is uh, to reveal n minus one input shares. How we will proceed to decrease this cost? To re remind you, um, so the input share is a form uh, sharing, an additive sharing of our secret. So the x1, x2, xn has been chosen such that the sum of them is equal to the secret x. But in practice, it means that we can choose the first one at random, the second one at random, except the last one. We, we choose all of them randomly, and the last one we choose such that we have the sum. And if we can generate them randomly, we can generate them thanks to a pseudo-random generator using a seed. So in practice, we will, uh, for each party, there will be a seed, and we will use a PRG to expand the real input shares. And to reveal uh, a share, an input share, x1, for example, we just need to reveal the seed. And it's more, uh, it's cheaper. And so, and for the last party, um, we need to add an auxiliary value, a, cor a value which will correct the, the, the sh share xn so to have the right sum. But since, it, it, it means that we still need to reveal the n minus one seeds. We can, from an ID of uh, this article of CCS, we can go do better. We can generate the seed using a tree structure. The idea is we will first have a seed, a root seed, then we will generate a binary tree using a pseudo random generator at each seed. So and we will expand the f a node into two children by uh, using a pseudo-random generator, and we will have this tree structure. So as I said, we want to reveal all the seeds except one, for example, I star. So it means that this red path must remain, must remain secret to reveal no information about the seed X, X seed I star. But to reveal the other one, we can just reveal the seed in the dark green cases. So in fact, it's the sibling path of the path between the leaf I star and to, to the root. And so instead of reviewing n minus one seed, we just need to reveal log n seed, just the sibling path. If we write the new expression of the signature size, we obtain the following one. We see the, the um, auxiliary value to correct the sh additive sharing, the broadcasted value of the hidden party, and the sibling path with log n. And if we grow the new graphic, we obtain now a decreasing uh, curve. For eight parties, we are around uh, um, 16 kilobytes, and if we take a larger n, we get a larger, a smaller signature size. It's, so it's what I call the traditional approach because it, during a long time it has been considered as a state of the art of the MPC in the head framework. However, it is not free, of course, to increase the number of parties. We need to pay it, in fact, in running time. Because in the prover need to emulate a MPC protocol in his head, meaning if we increase the number of parties, the computation in his head will be more expensive. And it is the red, value, the red curve for the signing algorithm and the verification algorithm. Um, we can see that for 228 parties, we are around 
20 milliseconds to sign and verify. Yes, the verification is almost as expensive as the signing because the verifier need to make all the computation in the MPC protocol except for one party. So it's almost the same computation. If we try to decompose the running time, we get the following. There is a red part, the blue part, which is dedicated to the symmetric, uh, the use of the symmetric primitive for the commitment, the C3, the, uh, the, to expand each seed to the input shares, etc. There is the green part, which is uh, the cost to emulate the MPC protocol. And the yellow is the rest of the running time. If we make a cut in the graphic, we obtain the following one. We cut to, to, to eight parties. The signing time will be around 10, 20 milliseconds. And the bottleneck we see is the MPC emulation. And uh, after that, it's the symmetric part. And this proportion is, uh, yes, during a long time, it has been considered as a state of the art. And it's why we consider that the MPC framework leads to very expensive uh, signature because it takes some, sometimes tens of milliseconds, even worse sometimes. But in last year, there was two new work which decrease this uh, bottleneck, which remote this bottleneck. The first one is a hypercube technique presented at Eurocrypt this year. The idea is the following one. We have our N chairs, and we will organize them in a square. The N chairs. So the one side, the edge of the square will be of square root of N. What we will do is we will sum all the rows and all the columns. We obtain two, uh, when we focus on the rows, we obtain a, N, a square root of n sharing, additive sharing of the same value x. Because if we, since the sum is commutative, uh, it doesn't change uh, the value. So we have a new sharing of x, but only with square root of n parties. We can make the same thing for the column, and we obtain a second square root n uh, parties sharing. In the traditional approach I showed just previously, the idea is to emulate uh, the MPC protocol, which take with n parties, and which output all the blue cases in uh, the square. But in the hypercube approach, the idea is to emulate two sub protocol. And uh, this protocol is uh, take as sharing uh, the, the columns, the, um, the sharing from the columns and the sharing from the rows. Before we had the cheating of one of the n in the traditional approach, now for each sub protocol, we have a um, soundness error of one of the square root of n, because it's a number of parties in this sub protocol. But since uh, the, we can observe that the both sharing as independently, if we draw the, as independent, uh, the distribution probability is independent, we, and we, since we, op we emulate the both proto sub protocol, we have a root, a uh, uh, square, so we obtain the same. Uh, the same somnus error. We have uh, one over square root of n, two, two. But it means that in the traditional approach, we need to emulate n evaluation, n emulation of party, where in the, this new approach, we only need to do two square root of n emulation. So it's cheaper. In fact, we can make even better than instead of uh, emulate all the MPC protocol, we can make the computation of the plain value. And so since the last party is, uh, the result of the last party can be, can be written as uh, this val the re result of this value minus the rest, we save uh, two, uh, two emulation and we increase of one. Uh, it can be a small improvement, but uh, in the following it will be uh, very, 
better. So in this technique, I say we organize all the sharing in the square root of each side is a square, uh, in the square, and each side is a square root of n. But we are not limited to uh, square root. We can make in the cube or an hypercube of dimension what we want. The optimal is an hypercube of dimension log n. It means that uh, the side of one edge is only two. So in practice, it means that we will emulate log n subprotocol. We have only two parties. The soundness will be the same since it will be one of the two. Two log of n, which is uh, one over n. And the emulation cost will be two times log of n parties. And thanks to the little tricks I showed you previously, we can say one emulation by dimension. In fact, we have the, the cost of the emulation of this technique is one plus log of n parties. So, yes, just to sum up, with a traditional approach, we have log n emulation. In the hypercube approach, introduced at Eurocrypt, we have only one plus log n emulation, which makes things cheaper. So if I draw the same graphic, what was the graphic for hypercube approach, we obtain the following one for the hypercube approach. We see that the green part almost disappear. But there is a orange part which appear, which is just the cost to make all the sum in the hypercube. We need to pack all the, all the sharing. So if we make the same cut, now the running time of the signing is seven milliseconds. We we'll must then divide by two the signature size, uh, the running time. And now the emulation, MPC emulation, is not anymore the bottleneck. It's the symmetric part. As I say, the symmetric part is to emulate, to commit all the value and to expand all the pseudo randomness. That is for the first optimization. There is a second one, the threshold approach. It's quite simple. The idea is even simpler. As I said, the MPC protocol in the traditional approach take an additive sharing of the secret. In the threshold approach, we just say, instead of using an additive sharing, you use a low threshold sharing scheme. For example, the Shamir secret sharing scheme. To just to remind you, the sharing secret sharing scheme consists in the following. To share a value x, we will first uh, sample some coefficient r. We will build the polynomial so that the sum of the, the constant term is a secret. And each share will be an evaluation of this polynomial where the evaluation point is public. So the idea is simply that we just replace the additive sharing into, a, for example, a Shamir secret sharing scheme. And instead of relieving n minus 1 shares, we just need to reveal L, um, L shares, where L was the privacy threshold of the Shamir secret sharing scheme. And in practice, we can choose L equal to 1, 2, or even 3. So a very small value. How it can be uh, strange that relieving only a small number of parties makes the sound, the proof, zero knowledge proof, still sound. What I explained previously of when we reveal all the parties except the last one, it enables us to catch the prover easily. But if we reveal only, for example, one party, it seems a, a little strange that it works. I unfortunately don't have the time to explain why there is the article, but it works. I will just explain the consequences of that. First, since we reveal only L chairs, N party, we, the prover need to re-emulate only L parties. It's direct. We can show that the prover just need to emulate one plus L party instead of N by party. So it's even for the prover, there will be a lot of uh, saving in the running time. Since we are relieving only a small number of shares, we cannot, we will use a Merkle tree to commit the input share. Finally, 
uh, not finally. So, uh, there is, a, of course, we need to pay. This, uh, there is, it will be better in the running time than the hypercube approach, but the drawback is the signature size will be lower because we will use a Merkle tree instead of a C tree, which is more expensive. And even if the proof is sound, there is some details where we lost some a small part of the soundness, and it's why we obtain a larger signature size. And the last important thing is if, since we use low threshold sharing scheme, we have the concern that the number of parties is limited, is upper bounded by the size of the field. It's a property is because of the MDS conjecture. And we have this constraint. We cannot, uh, um, we, have this, we cannot take a large N if we are working on a small field. So same graphic. Here's the new one. It starts to be flattened. Three remarks. The first one, we can see that the graphic is not complete. It stopped at uh, 251 parties. It was because of the constraint I said just previously. We cannot take uh, the n we want. We are limited. And since we are working on the SDNZ on the field uh, GF251, we cannot take more than the, that number of parties. The second observation is the signature size is bigger. The last one is uh, the running time is better. And there is an interesting property that the verification will be very fast compared to the signing. There is an asymmetry where, in the previous case, there, it was symmetric. Just if I make the same cut. Now, instead of five, seven milliseconds in the hypercube approach, we are now into 1.6 milliseconds to sign. Um, the emulation part is even smaller than previously. In fact, the symmetric part is completely different from the hypercube because now we, we are Merkle tree. It's not the same part. We, it's not the same computation. And but we lost two kilobytes of uh, signature size. For the verification, since it's not symmetric, I need to explain. In this case, it's only 0 0.2 milliseconds, so very fast compared to the signature size, almost a factor 10. And we see that uh, there is no more but the symmetric and the MP simulation is both the bottleneck. Uh, there's no clear bottleneck. So to sum up the optimization, there is a traditional approach introduced in 2018. And last year, there will be a, there is two new techniques, the hypercube technique and the threshold variant. The, the, to sum up, the hypercube approach lead to shorter signature size, but slower signing time. And the verification time is almost the same as the signing time. In the case of the threshold, we obtain a faster signing time, a very fast verification relatively to the signing. But we obtain a larger signature. And we have a restriction of the number of parties, which can be very, very an issue because some submissions are working on the, GF, uh, the, field of the binary field. And so it means that we are only uh, two parties. So it can be a real issue. Here's a candidate submitted in the new call of the NIST, Aimer, Biscuit. So, and that is the, the variant they use. Aimer and Biscuit, if I'm not mistaken, is working on the traditional approach. But I think that would be faster if they use the hypercube approach. There is no limitation. Mira, MCOM, RIDE, and Mi Mira, Mirit, uh, MCOM, and RIDE are working on uh, the hypercube approach. And SD and ZED are working for the short instance, because there is still a short instance, a fast instance, uh, like a thanks. Uh, the short instance use the hypercube approach, the f uh, and the fast use a threshold variant. And the reason why there is no, currently no more uh, the other don't use the threshold approach 
for the fast variant is because the degradation, the, the loss in the signature size is too big, and it's more interesting to use an hypercube with a smaller number of parties than the threshold, even if we don't have any, the fast verification, uh, fast, very fast verification. Uh, to, I will just, to completeness, present two work related to the MPCNZ framework. I said there was, in the beginning, three, uh, eight submissions uh, about MPCNZ, but in the previous table, I present only seven. It's because um, all the, the, what I present to you is a standard notion of MPCNZ. But there is a new, uh, another one, is the limit of the MPC in the head, where the, we can see that the um, MPC protocol is, is quite de degenerated. It's simpler. It's just a path. So the, the computation are cheaper. But uh, we cannot use anymore the hypercube technique and the threshold technique. is uh, only for the standard notion. So, and so the last the last uh, signature size pair is in this new, this other uh, model. Fist, so I will not detail, enter in detail. It's a new result. I don't know the details yet. I didn't have time to have a look in the specification. So in the submission, there is no MPC in the base signature applied to the AES. Uh, uh, ciphertext. There was a, a lot of uh, work. There were barbecue, banquet, uh, etc. But in the NIST, new call of the NIST, there is no submission about it. But there is FIST, which is kind of follow-up, follow-up work of all the MPC in the head uh, approach applied to AS. And in fact, is the first AS based signature, which is smaller than things. And it will be presented at crypto next week. To conclude, there is, few limita there is some limitation about uh, the using the MPC in the head framework. It's relatively slow, a few milliseconds, if we compare to the lattice-based schemes. There is a greedy use of symmetric, symmetric cryptography, which lead to relatively large uh, signature size. It's four tens kilobytes for the first security level. There is a predatory growth of the, of the size. It's not written in the security level. But it's not specific to the MPC in the head framework. It's a property of all the uh, signature, uh, which come from a zero knowledge proof with non negligible probability. Advantage, conservative uh, assumption. There is often, in most of the submission, no structure, no trapdoor. When we, for SDNZ, for example, it's applied to, to the SDNZ problem, the, no, the raw problem, very small public key. So since the large public key, it gives a quite nice trade-off between the public key and the large, uh, the signature size. And it has the advantage to be very, there is a lot of parameters, and we can select what we want to have the, if we have a limitation of the running time, we can select what we want. To conclude, MPC in the head, very versatile framework, can be applied to very, any one-way function. I show you some of them. Practical tools, it's quite redundant huh, to the advantages. S few perspectives, uh, I believe, uh, in. Um, there, is, there has been two new work last year uh, to improve, which improve the MPC in the head transformation, the hypercube approach and the threshold approach, I believe that there will be follow-up works, which make the things more efficient. And since now we are succeed to achieve, uh, obtain signature size with quite interesting performances, I think the next step would be to, to build signatures with advanced functionality, like ring signature, threshold signature. Since there is already a st some structure in the, in the schemes, there is already a sharing of some, the secret, etc. There is al already an MPC protocol inside. We could think that uh, it 
will lead to efficient uh, signature in, um, with add-on functionality. But it's just a guess. There is only few results about it, about the ring signature, and no result, I think, for the rest. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Thibault, for this talk. So if you have any questions, there are two mics on each side of the, the room, so feel free to just stand up and ask your question. Um, can you give an intuition of why you can use a one threshold secret sharing scheme? Because it seems like the view of each of the MPC participant contains the secret. No, no, each view is we use, a, we, if we take L equal to one in the threshold case, it means that we use a threshold uh, Shamir secret sharing with uh, linear uh, affine function. So two parties would reveal the, the secret. Okay, L is the, the, um, the, the degree of the function, right? The, yes, L is the degree of the function in the a, threshold. So the threshold is L plus one for the... The, we, yes, the fresh, the, to rebuild the threshold to rebuild uh, the secret, yes, is as L plus one. Okay, thank you. Um, hi, and thank you for the nice presentation. Just a question about, uh, I'm not sure, uh, to understand how it's possible to do some MPC with uh, when the one-way function is AES. Like, how do you compute the function G of uh, Y and alpha and somehow manage to prove that the AES of X is equal to Y without giving neither the key nor the, well, X? <laughs> It's uh, all the domain of the MPC, multi-party computation. The, the multi-party computation, we have a shared secret, and we can make any computation we want. It can be expensive, of course, but uh, there's a lot of technique in MPC to, for example, often uh, we decompose the, the, this function G into arithmetic circuit, and there is a technique uh, to prove uh, to, to prove the addition and the multiplication. Addition is quite easy since uh, if we sum two additive sharing, we obtain the additive sharing of the sum. The multiplication is uh, not uh, trivial, but there is a technique to prove a multiplication in MPC, and from that we can check any circuit we want in MPC. So this means that you have to provide um, the, uh, the verifier with the circuit to compute AES with a given key? Yeah, of course, the verifier knows the circuit, knows the function G, it's public. But in this case, don't you rely on assumption on white box cryptography to be sure that the verifier can't know the key from the circuit implementation? No, yeah, there is no, uh, there is no other assumption. It's just a perfect uh, privacy with additive sharing. We just rely on a, an uh, secret sharing. And uh, since uh, secret sharing is perfect in terms of privacy, there is no more in assumption. OK, thank you. Um, I was wondering about the field you selected. So um, at the beginning of all of the examples, you're using GF251. But then in the table for Hypercube, you had 256. So do you prefer using 251 all across? Or because if you use 256, then the threshold for the number of parties would also be 256. So, But the reason why I didn't take uh, in my cut uh, 256 in the threshold case is because it was not possible to have a, because we have this limitation. Right. I mean, do you prefer using field 251 ah. for all? Or? Um, in the case of SDNZ, the submission, there is a both field. We consider uh, GF261 and GF228. Uh, and the, the reason of that is uh, in the threshold case, the bottleneck seems to be the arithmetic part. So it will, we want to have the faster multiplication in the computation. It will be faster to make a multiplication on GF251 uh, ah. than in the, the other field. 
Okay. In the hypercube approach, it's the opposite. The bottleneck is very the, um, symmetric primitive. And, and uh, the bottleneck is, for example, the pseudo-randomness generation. And uh, generated elements of the, the field of two to eight elements is very simple. In the other case, we need to deal with rejection. It's make uh, the symmetric part even uh, larger. It's why in this submission, we consider the both field because each variant is better when mm -hmm, mm -hmm. reach one field. Thank you. Hello, thank you for your very nice presentation. Uh, I have just a question because right now, uh, with the technique of the hypercube, uh, you take a very high dimension for your hypercube, but let's say you take smaller dimension, uh, would, it have, like, would it make sense in terms of trade-off to use a threshold method inside, uh, you know, uh, like with the hypercube method? We thought about a uh, uh, merge between the both techniques uh, because uh, in the SDNZ team, uh, there is an uh, author of the both technique, uh, but uh, it's not possible, it's not compatible technique. Uh, it's can you give an intuition why or it's... Uh, the, the reason of the efficiency of the hypercube approach is thanks to the C3 okay. because we can have a large number of parties, but since all of them will be generated from a, a seed, it will be cheap except for the last one. But in the threshold case, we cannot use the seed anymore since there is a redundancy in each chair. So if we reveal more, if we uh, reveal more uh, chair, it will be more expensive in the, uh, in the signature size. So it's quite the opposite, in fact. Uh, in one way, we want to, we want to reveal a lot of parties, but since it, all of them is cheap, it's nice. In the other case, we want as it, to reveal the less party as the, uh, we want to reveal one party, it's your, uh, the best one. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so let's all uh, thank the speaker again.